uh, sort of, there's a checkbox on it. As soon as you hit it, it decides to use the right one all of a sudden. All right, well, very cool. Glad to have you on board. Uh, yeah, some of the Tampa contingents, here I'll let you chat with them for a few minutes, and I'm going to square away a couple things I was in the middle of when I got distracted. <laughs> W7QO. Nice to meet you, by the way. Yeah, 73, uh, W7QO, Victor Alpha 7, November Yankee. NV9X, Victor Alpha 7, November Yankee. Victor Alpha 7, November Yankee, NV9X. Uh, how copy me on this radio? Chill out and clear, and error free. And that's uh, not doing too badly, uh, given that we're, what, 2,500 miles apart? Uh, let me uh, take a look at Google Earth. Uh, roger that. Uh, this may sound different than uh, my previous transmissions a moment or so ago. I'm now on a 5 watt HT of uh, 4161 DT, uh, standing out here in my front lawn, uh, about 40 miles from the repeater. You know what? I didn't sound any different from the previous radio. Um, I'm just sitting here. I just grabbed a 4101D out of my uh, radio library, and I could switch over to pretty much. I feel like I've got a selection of like NX320, NX300, uh, 4161s, 4061s. I, you know what? I noticed that the only thing that really makes a difference is the uh, receive audio in some of these. But uh, no, you know, it sounds exactly the same as the previous radio. Okay, well, that's an interesting observation because uh, we've been finding that the portable radios uh, in the ICOM line seem to be performing a little bit better than the mobile units. You know, on the commercial side, uh, we found the office that the uh, 4161 was just a, let's just say it's challenged, for lack of a better description. You know, we had a choice between deploying 4101s and 4161s, and everybody seems to prefer the uh, 4101. Hmm. Well, I am aware of a couple of challenges that the 4161 has, but uh, audio isn't one of them. Well, it most certainly isn't audio. The things that we found were the 